Bonjour guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to find the moment of inertia about the x-axis for a giving shape. Now, I know a lot of you guys have requested this video on Instagram and that's why I'm sharing with you guys here. Now, if you guys like this video, don't forget to give us a big thumbs up. Make sure that you guys subscribe for new videos every week and make sure you hit the bell so you get notified each time we post new videos. Now, let's get right into it. Okay guys, so what we're going to do here is first we, I'm going to give you guys a hint on how to solve for this problem, then you're going to pause the video and then you're going to try to attempt it and then you can come back and take a look at the solution. So here we are giving a shape and we want to find the moment of inertia about the x-axis. First let's take a look at the rectangle. So the rectangle is already on the x-axis, to, so to find the moment of inertia all we gotta do is grab the equation for the rectangle about the x-axis and then solve. We don't need to use the parallel axis theorem because dy is just zero because again the rectangle is already on the x-axis. There's nothing, no distance to reference it back to the x-axis. However, the triangle is not on the x-axis so we have to use the parallel axis theorem to reference the centroid of the triangle to the x-axis. So with that information, why don't you guys try it and I will see you in a little bit. Okay guys, so to find the moment of inertia about the x-axis, let's first start with the rectangle. Now, as I mentioned before, since the rectangle is already on the x-axis, we're not going to use the parallel axis theorem because dy will just be zero. There is nothing, no distance to reference the rectangle to the x-axis because it is already on the x-axis. Now, to find the moment of inertia about the x-axis for the rectangle, let's go to the reference manual and grab the equation. So if we go here, so this is guys under statics, and we are giving a table here. Now, if we take a look at the rectangle, we're, tr we're going to use this equation here because we're trying to find the moment of inertia about the x-axis, right? Not about the centroid x-axis, but just on this axis here, right here, right? So we're going to use bh cubed over three. Now let's take a look at the triangle. Now the triangle is inside the rectangle, so we actually have to do minus. So whenever you guys have a shape inside another shape, make sure that you guys do minus. Now, to find the moment of inertia about the x-axis for the triangle, we can actually have to use the parallel axis theorem because the triangle is not on the x-axis. So if we go to the reference manual and we take a look at the equations for the triangle, if we use ix, we can't use this equation because the triangle that we have is not right on the x-axis. So what we're going to have to do is use the ixc, which is the moment of inertia about the centroidal x-axis, and we're going to use the parallel axis theorem so that we relate the centroid or, or we reference the centroid to the x-axis, okay? So this is the equation we're going to use here. So let me write it down. So we're going to have bh cubed over 36, and then we're going to do minus. So this is the parallel axis theorem portion. So it's going to be area times d squared y. Now dy is going to be the distance from the centroid of the triangle to x-axis because what we're trying to do here is we're trying to reference the x-axis to the centroid of the triangle because the triangle is not right on the x-axis, okay? Now let's plug in the numbers. So here we have b for the rectangle, which is 12. The height here is 14. Don't forget to cube it. And then we're going to divide it by 3. And then we're going to have minus b. Now, this here is for the triangle, right? So make sure that you guys use 8 for B. The height is also 8, and we're going to cube it and divide it by 36. Then we're going to have minus the area. The area of a triangle is just going to be BH over 2. So we're going to have 8 times 8 over 2. And then we're going to multiply by DY. Now, as I mentioned, DY is going to be this distance here. So we're going to do 3, and then we're going to add the centroid of the triangle, which is h over 3, which is 8 over 3. So we're going to do 3 plus 8 over 3. And don't forget, guys, to square this term. Now, if you guys plug in these numbers in your calculator, you're going to get 9,835, and you're going to have the units of inch to the power 4, okay? Keep in mind, guys, that moment of inertia always is linked to the power of 4. Now, if we take a look at the multiple choice, the answer is going to be b. 
Now that's it guys for today's video. Now if you want to watch more engineering problems that will be on your FE exam, make sure that you guys check out our playlist. We have a lot of problems that will be on your FE exam. And also if you want more tips on how to pass your FE exam, make sure that you guys sign up on our website and don't forget to give us a big thumbs up. Make sure that you guys subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified each time we post new videos. Thank you guys for watching. Good luck with your studying and I will see you soon. À la prochaine. Oh yeah. Everybody now